Malo la mali e Hawaii ki mo lelei e tonga ko to ko fanongo mai ki polo kalama ko ni ko e polo kalama ko anga maheni ki ai e kawa ko tutuku e apia ko ma alunga tonga ko e hala fanonga ki fa imata wanoa wo wa. Welcome to today's series of conversations of uh, Tonga High School ex students from all corners of the globe. Today's conversation would be two hours, and it is the first time that we conduct this program in English. For those of you not familiar with the school, Tonga High School was established in 1947 by Prince Tungi, the Minister of Education. Prince Tungi later became King Balfa Ahau Dubo IV. The aim of the school is to provide an opportunity for students to achieve a level of education equivalent to that offered in neighboring countries such as New Zealand and Australia. On the 4th of June, 2022, Tonga High School will be reaching its 75th anniversary, its diamond jubilee since its establishment in 1947. Well, today, ex-students, I'm honored to host six members from the global Tonga High School community and alumni and two teachers. And without further ado, I'd like to invite our guest panelists for today's program to please introduce themselves. And I would start uh, by asking Dr. Ruth D'Souza to kick off the introduction. Thank you. Uh, Malo Lele, everybody. And uh, it's a big, it's a massive privilege to be invited to this uh, Talanoa. And uh, thank you, Amelia, and all the other beautiful people that have organized this. Uh, I went to Tonga High School mainly in 1982 during Cyclone Isaac and uh, also met my first love there, but I'll tell you that later. And um, I now live uh, on the unceded territory of the Bunwarung language group in uh, Victoria in Australia. And uh, thanks to Tonga High School, I think uh, in part, I work at a university um, in Melbourne and uh, thank you so much for having me. I also roped in my parents to join this Talanoa who uh, may speak and join in from time to time. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth, uh, for the introduction. And uh, I think I will just uh, continue with the introduction by asking Mr. and Mrs. Etwini and Ivy Tezuza to say hello, please. Malo <laughs> Um My name is Edwin, and this is my long suffering wife, Ivy. Uh, <clears throat> We spent two years in Tonga and I absolutely love teaching there because my students were ever so cooperative and keen to learn that teaching was a sheer joy. And I don't know about Ivy, but I'm talking about myself. So I enjoyed my two years of teaching in Tonga to the max because I thought the students were wonderful. I can't say more than that. <laughs> I had a good time too. I taught typing, but uh, some of the equipment and things were old and ancient, but so I learned quite a bit of the different typewriters, even repaired some, and uh, managed to get filing cabinets and start the Pittman's typing exams and, and ask the girls to not be fucker pico pico, that was my favorite word to get them <laughs> typing. Come into the classroom, take the cover off, put it onto the chair and start warm up drills. All those little rules that you had in typing. Initially, they were a bit slow to ask, but I said, no, you have to ask. If you don't know something, you ask. I don't mind. It turned out that even at tea break and lunch break, I had to hold tight not you know, wanting to go to the loo or something, no, but I must go, I didn't bring my potty, I used to say, but we, we got on very well and I had some excellent students. 
They did well in their typing, got some excellent results. So it was really very good, good experience. Cyclone Isaac also made us wake up <laughs> and realize how things can change overnight. But all in all, it was a wonderful experience to see the Puaka and the Moa and learned a few words. Yeah. It was very, very nice. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Etwini and Ivy Dezusa. And uh, what a way to start this very first um, uh, program in English uh, to have teachers and to have students uh, that attended Tonga High School uh, during those years. Um, let me just take us uh, to. Manila, Philippines, and ask uh, the next uh, panelist to introduce himself uh, to everyone. Over to you, Mr. Ramos. Uh, hi, um, it's noon, so good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Norman, I entered Tonga High in 1976. I arrived in Tonga in 1973, spent a couple of years in Tonga Side School. And um, Tonghai, yeah, was quite intimidating coming from a small school, Tonghai side school, and I was intimidated at first, but then made a lot of friends. And uh, set in a lot of good teachers. One of them is the best one uh, in physics, Mr. D'Souza. Never forget that. You've I always got mention me. that wherever I go. <laughs> wherever I go, I always mention my <laughs> physics teacher. I had a very good foundation in physics and mathematics, Mr. Steve French. Yes. And yeah, it was a good place to grow up in, in Tonga, with the other Filipino families, Roger. We'd, we'd always go to the beach uh, the Sunday. And break the tongue and rule of not, not making a lot of noise. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> not making a lot of noise on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And uh, yeah. Thank I, I, you. We, we, we'd wish, we, we wish we, we, we'd go back there someday. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Norman. And it's a, a pleasure for us to have you. Uh, and for those of you who have just tuned in to Road to Mata 2022. Manato Melie series. This is your first English speaking uh, panel tonight. Um, let us move from Manila, Philippines to Sweden. Uh, I will let her come on camera and introduce herself, please. Malo Apito Manjula. Hello, I'm Manjula Premanig. Uh, um, I, I was born in Tonga and uh, went to Tonga Side School and um, then Tonga High School. And I've met a few families like uh, the, the Ramos, the Burnabees, and, uh, and uh, we, I mean, we all at school and, and we had, a, uh, I mean, and I'm, I think I met uh, Kaminda. Kaminda, I was with Kaminda. That's a rather mm, yeah, Norland's sister. And, and Norland, I mean, Norland is your brother, other oh, yeah. brother. Yeah, Norland and Kaminda, I was with. And of course, I know Roger's family. Um, uh, I've met um, uh, Corina and and uh, what was, uh, and Ronnie, and many more, yeah. And uh, I've lived in Tonga since then, and I met my husband from, he's from Sweden, and uh, we lived in Tonga still then, and, uh, and then we have three children. We, then we moved to Sweden, uh, in two, 2018, and now we're living here permanently. Mm. Thank you, Manjula, and we'll come back to you uh, later. Um, <clears throat> we'll move on to, um, I'm looking at Julie, 
Uh, if you can come on and introduce yourself, please, Malo. Yes, hello, I'm Julie. I was Julie Faulkner when I was living in Tonga, and now I'm Julie Faulkner Schaefer. I went to Tonga in 1977 with my parents, Stan and Jane Faulkner, who were missionaries. And um, I started Tonga High School in 1977. And um, I just remember at first it was seemed really, you know, big to me and um, a little scary, but it was, I, I made lots of friends and Beverly who's trying to come on, she was one of my friends. And um, like Roger said, I was kind of quiet or not Roger, Norman. And, but I love Tonga. I loved coconut trees and the chickens running around. And it was, I just loved everything about it. I miss Tonga. <laughs> Thanks, Julie, and it's nice to have you um, tonight. Uh, we'll, uh, I can see Beverly is trying to come online, and uh, we'll move to, uh, to Australia. Uh, over to you, Roger, please. Maloy Lele. My name is uh, Roger Burnaby, and I entered Tonga High School in 1974. My class was uh, Form 1P under Mrs. Uh, Panuve, and I was in Telea House, the greenhouse. <laughs> so while, while in Tonga, I lived in uh, Tungi Road at uh, Fasi Moe Afi, or Fasi for short. And I've been in Australia since 1987, and I currently live in Canberra, which is the national capital of Australia. And it's located between Sydney and Melbourne. So I'm the fourth of five children. My youngest brother, Robert, was born in Tonga. And we all live in Australia except for one sister, Evelyn, who's uh, in, uh, living in Vancouver, British Columbia. At the moment, she's here in Australia visiting us in preparation for my dad's uh, 90th birthday uh, in a week's time. And my, my parents live in Queenbian which is only a 15 minutes drive away from our place. So we all live close to each other, except for uh, Ronnie who's in uh, Queensland and my sister in Canada. And I'm married with two children. My wife is Gladys and I have a son, Jeremy, who's uh, 28 years old and a daughter, Rachel, who's 23 years old. Thanks. Thank you, Roger, and thanks everyone. And I'm just checking in on uh on Bev. Um, Bev, if you're hearing us, uh, could you please um, just test your sound and say uh, something so we know that you are fully online um, before we go on to the next round of, uh, of, uh, of this Talanoa or this conversation. Bev, can, Bev um, if you can unmute yourself and, and say something. I think she's still um, figuring out her Zoom. Uh, but she will definitely be joining us. But again, uh, thanks, thanks for, for those introduction and uh, for those of you listening in uh, or watching this, uh, this is your first Talanoa Manat Melia in English uh, from these colleagues and friends of ours from all over the corners of the world. So um, my name is Ameria Kinahoi Siamomua of the class of 1972. And again, I'm deeply honored to facilitate the reflections and sharing by these uh, esteemed members of the Tonga High School uh, Global Alumni and family. It's been a while since everyone left Tonga High School. And I think you've all heard that uh, all, most of these um, colleagues have been in Tonga High School in the 70s and the 80s. So my task um, as your facilitator uh, is to take us back to Tonga High School. I'm sorry if I'm forcing everyone to go back to Tonga High School, but to the Hala Taufa Ahau and the Hala Mate Alona and the environment that you called your second home as Tonga High School. So uh, we will be talking, uh, hopefully they would be willing to share those first days uh, of entering Tonga High School. Whether you came from Tonga High School, I heard that some of you came from Thomas mm -hmm. High School. 
Some of you came from other countries. What were your first impressions of being at Tonga High School? And I guess I'm talking about the memories of an 11 or 12 year old, or maybe a little older if you came to Form 2 or Form 3. Your first impressions of the school. Who were your friends? Do you still remember your friends in Tonga High School? Uh, any favorite teachers? Uh, anything specific that you'd like to speak about? Things that you may not have liked. When we did this at uh, Talanoa in Tongan, we talked about fond memories and we also talked about things that we didn't like about the school, that we didn't like about our, our classmates and, and funny things as well. So this is a fun conversation. This is your new high school environment, Tonga High School. Uh, what did it mean to you? So um, whoever's ready to kick off these fond memories of your first impressions, <laughs> I can see someone is ready. Thank you. <laughs> Give it a start, uh, a roof, please. Marlo, I'll beat the roof. Um, Amelia, do you, are you able to let me share my screen for a second? Because I've got some photos. Would that be all right? I'm, I've got them all ready. Um, here we go. I'm very excited. And hopefully the technology works. Um, so can you, see, can you all see that? Can you make it larger? Um, yes, I can. How's that? Is that better? better. Very good. So um, I thought uh, people might enjoy these photos, but this is a laka laka practice which we used mm. to have on uh, Wednesday afternoons. And I kind of thought, you know, I could talk, but it might be fun to also show some photos. Um, but that was something that was a great joy and great fun um, to be immersed in a culture for me um, where people were really proud of being Tongan and culture was part of the schooling um, was something really special as I'd come from Aotearoa, New Zealand, but in a very white environment to then move into an environment where people were so proud to be Tongan, to speak, you know, to hear it spoken all around me, to then have the cultural aspects and be really immersed in it was really beautiful for me. Um, and I'd come from somewhere where it wasn't that cool to be brown. So to be in Tonga was really special. And then here you can see my dearest friends. So we were this gang of four and we used to go and buy cakes every lunchtime. Do you remember cakes on, on the main street? You know, the lovely fried, <laughs> fried lunchtime treat. And uh, we were great mates and we'd dawdle to and from school. Um, this is the outside the house we lived in, in Infasi and this is what I looked like then. Um, even more beautiful now, as you can see, just joking. <laughs> and then um, this might be um, some of our favorite people in Tonga, um, especially me, who mm. used to hang around with this young man a lot. Um, but I'll quickly move over. <laughs> I'll quickly move slides. And here is my class. Um, sadly, quite a few of those dear friends have passed away, which... Uh, which is very sad, but I know that um, my darling friend Salote um, Kioa is listening from uh, Utah and Sela Tuatafaiva are joining us from Auckland today. So, and that's me. Uh, and there's Talavosa who has since passed away. And here is Steve oh, French, you. our maths teacher. Um, and he made me really excited about maths. And I, with his teaching, I understood maths. And I, got, I guess I want to say that um, I had the most incredible teachers in Tonga. I felt very pri privileged. So Steve French got me excited about maths. Uh, Ikani Fifita um, was so passionate about English. And um, because of him, I think I got, the top mark that year um, for UE, I got like 94% or something crazy that, you know, yeah. um, and uh, he wrote me into the school magazine and I did some calligraphy in our magazine pages. And then you can see me here. Uh, this was one day after Laka Laka practice. I was totally uncoordinated. And the good news is I'm still uncoordinated. 
uh, and I had all these beautiful, graceful Tongan tahine, you know, <laughs> friends who would be elegant and graceful, and I was just a complete buff head. Um, I don't know if you can see this very good-looking couple over here. Uh, that's actually mum and dad outside the house in Fussy. So we were kind of behind Joe's hotel, uh, behind <laughs> Princess, be, behind Baron Tuita's place in Fussy. And then up here you can see, um, oops, sorry, my old friend uh, Subhash Swami. Uh, I think this is Be um, Bev, uh, Ian Mose, who has sadly since passed away. Uh, and uh, Bev's brother Bill, who also has passed away, and I have very fond memories of our of our experiences, kind of uh, you know going away at the weekend, you know, and um, sailing together. And I guess I'm just going to stop sharing. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too much with that. Um, and I just wanted to throw in a couple of other very favorite memories, um, which some of you will remember as well, going to the movies to see lots of Kung Fu, <laughs> Bruce Lee <laughs> movies, um, the theme music at the movie theaters, which always um, was fun and seeing lots of James Bond movies, going to the Basilica for a very, very long mass on Sundays. Roger and Norman, you'll remember that as well. Yeah. Um, wow. you, but, but sung yeah. so beautifully. So it was like you're transported, <laughs> you know, there were angels singing, including the priest. Um, Joe's Sota, I, I put down going to the Dateline sometimes on Saturday nights. Um, all the songs that played on the radio that I still remember. And I think I should stop there and, and let other people have a talk. But yeah, Tonga High School was really special because it was for the first time, maybe um, as a young person, I felt proud of being brown in a place and felt welcomed and um, enjoyed and supported in a way that I hadn't in New Zealand. Thanks, Ruth. Um, that was great to see those old pictures. And I'm sure some of your classmates may have uh, also try to identify themselves in those pictures. Um, we'll move on to one of the uh, two gentlemen here, uh, Norman or Roger, when whoever's ready can come on with your very fond memories and some fun ones, some uh, not so fun ones. All yours, uh, Norman, thank you. Uh, Roger, you can go oh, first. Roger. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so my, my first impression when I, entered Tonga High School was that the students were all bigger and older than I was. Because <laughs> I, I entered Tonga High School at 10 years old. So imagine, you know, going to a school and, you know, everyone are like giants. And um, yeah, so I, I was familiar with the school surroundings as I spent all my six uh, years of primary school at Tonga Side School. And uh, yeah, which was just next door. And the school uniform at Tonga High School was the same as Tonga Side School, but in high school, uh, it was more strict. You know, we had to uh, make sure we wore a belt and sandals and they had to be brown and not any other color. Yeah. So my, my friends in the early years uh, were Peter Simmons, who has since uh, moved to New Zealand. And uh, one was uh, Semisi Pone. Now, I, I was with uh, Semisi Pone from Form 1 to Form 6. And we attended the same high school in uh, New Zealand, you know, in Form 7 at Mount Albert Grammar. And we also attended the same university, University of Auckland in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And we even ended up sharing the same room as officers in the Ministry of Agriculture, Forests and Fisheries at Vaini, mm -hmm. uh, Tongatapu. So uh, it's just pure coincidence. I mean, we weren't stalking each other or whatever, but, but it's just, uh, just looking back, I mean, from Form 1, 1974, all the way to, you know, going through finishing high school, uni, and then ending up in the same department in Tonga, uh, I thought, gee, that's uh, some, some coincidence there. And uh, I also had other friends, which I hanged around with outside school, uh, school hours such as uh, the Ramos boys, uh, George Chang, Bill Ogburn, 
Subhash Swami, Michael Padna, just to name a few. I had many friends. Also had a lot of friends who were girls, like Manjula. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and there, there was, there, it was fun to be with them. Uh, when, when I was in Tonga, I didn't really uh, learn Tongan. My, my, my brother was the Tongan speaker. So I tended to mix with the, uh, you know, the Palangis because, uh, you know, I can converse in, in English with them. Um, yeah, I didn't really have any favorite teachers. Uh, we had Palangis and, and locals and each one had the um, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and I sort of just adapted, you know, to the style of each one of those teachers, but they, they were all good in, in my mind. Uh, you know, teachers are all different and they have different styles, but at the end of the day, you know, it's really the students, they have to, to work with the teachers and vice versa. Uh, spending my childhood in Tonga, I was there for 19 years. Uh, wow. It was very special. Yeah, <laughs> long time. I initially, Ooh. the contract of my dad was three years, uh, but then, you know, it ended up being 19 years. And uh, the, the things that I loved was uh, when I was in Tonga living in Fasi, we lived near the sea, the beach, uh, well, the sea. And I would spend a lot of time uh, combing the waterfront during low tide, you know, and uh, there's a lot of sea creatures there. Mm. And um, yeah, so in, in the early years, in the 60s and 70s, there was a lot of uh, uh, sea creatures in the seas and, and the beach. But then over time, I noticed that you know, uh, it sort of got depleted um, the, because of uh, pollution and probably, you know, overfishing and, and, and people getting, you know, more than, than what they should be getting out of the, um, the, um, the, the seas. And uh, as there were no pet shops in Tonga, we had to get our own uh, sea creatures for our aquarium. So that was fun. And what, one time I recall going home and I was just full of mud me and my, uh, my friend Atushi, who's uh, Japanese, we were all mud, like black from top to the bottom, covered in mud because we were trying to, uh, you know, get some fish from the, the, local, pond, the local pond, you know, uh, near our area. So, um, yeah, I mean, when, when mom saw us, uh, got a bit of a fright because we were all, <laughs> all covered in mud. And then uh, after the shower, obviously, you know, she knew who it was. And um, yeah, so diving off the wharf with the other Tongan boys and swimming at one of the numerous sandy beaches was fun. The waters were crystal clear and very warm. That's something that I really loved about Tonga. And uh, basically Tonga is a paradise in a nutshell. So thank you. Thank you, Roger. Um, and um, what a, a long period of time of 19 years um, yeah. living in Tonga. Yeah. It went quickly, though. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So um, um, I will just move on to Julie, and then we'll come to either Norman or Manjula. And uh, Bev, if you're hearing us, please uh, keep trying. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, online uh, with us here. So Julie, tell us uh, your memories of your early days at Tonga High School in Tonga. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. When, when we first moved to Tonga, we lived in Halaleva. And shortly after that, we moved to Sopu. And that's when I started Tonga High School. And um, a good friend of mine, I don't remember his last name now, but his name was Sosua. And I remember when it, after school would be over and I would be walking home, he would always walk with me. And I found out later it's because you shouldn't really be walking alone in, um, if you're a girl. So he was very kind. He would wait for me and then he would just escort me home. And that is a good memory I have. Kind of, you know, felt like I was being protected and um, I also had some good memories with Bev. She came a couple years after I'd already been there. And um, we, would, we would go to the beach sometimes and we would hang out. It was pretty fun. And I had 
many friends in Tonga High School and not in Tonga High School as well. And I loved, I just loved the island. And um, when I first got there, I was taken with um, the trees and the ocean, like the crystal clear water. And I taught myself how to climb coconut trees. And um, yep. And my dad was very impressed with that. If people came to the island to visit with them, he would always say, Julie, can you go up the trees and get some coconuts? So I would climb up and I'd twist the coconuts, throw them down. He would cut them open. It was, they were very impressed. And um, that's, so that's a good memory I have. And my, one of my favorite teachers was Mr. Ikani Fifita. Ooh. He was also a really good friend of my family's. And every day after class, he would say, what are you, uh, what is your mom cooking for dinner? And I would say, sometimes I would just list things. And then, but if I said tacos, he would always show up. And my mom wondered before, how does he know that I'm making tacos? And she <laughs> didn't know that he would ask me <laughs> every day what we were going to be eating. And so that was, that's a good memory I have. Thank you very much, Julie, uh, for those memories. And I'm sure uh, Ikani must be listening. Uh, he's one of those that uh, has amazed a lot of <laughs> students. And uh, uh, so with that, I'll move on to either Norman or to Manjula, whoever's ready. Uh, I go first because I have, I have to leave. Okay. Can I go first, Manjula? Oh, you mean I go first or Norman? Or may I? Because I have to leave at around 1.30. Ah, because okay. you, you want to go. Yeah, I have to go. So should I? Go ahead, go Norman. Ahead. Go okay. ahead. Um, yeah, um, just to follow up with Roger's uh, statements. Yeah, it was uh, great um, growing up in Tonga. No crime I that I know of. And yeah. Uh, very peaceful beach was uh, great uh, white sand and clear waters we go every sunday after mass and we bring the food um, from the umu you still remember the umu you still have umu yeah um tonga high i didn't like uh, attending assembly when the sun was up already <laughs> i think and the practice uh, singing and dancing practices would sit for hours with our legs, you know, crossed. It was, uh, it was sucks. I mean, yeah, I practice uh, tongue and songs. Laka laka. And, you know, yeah, laka laka. And yeah, my tongue and would tie up and everything. <laughs> I was, I think, in Kava House, red, red one. And they picked me one time to run a 400-meter 400 uh, race. And uh, I didn't uh, practice or anything. And I came last, of course. It was <laughs> very embarrassing. <laughs> I was out of breath. The first 50 meters, I was already out of breath. And it was one that I'd never forget that. So the next time I join something, I, I think I have to prepare. And uh, yeah, we love go. We 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 love going fishing at the wharf at the yacht club. I think it was uh, with one of the Fili Filipino uh, family, uh, Armando Abulencia, and we catch a lot of fish there. And we also go swimming in Quinsalote Wharf. A lot of memories. We go jogging early morning, going through the cemeteries by the side of the road. There's cemeteries everywhere, and uh, somebody would scream, and we, you know, just rush off to frighten because it is a cemetery. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, Tonga High. Uh, we play touch rugby during recess and before class. So we enter class waiting and everything. 
library ya terus dia was a librarian dia adalah li librarian was a foreigner palangi mm. remember the lady lady ya yeah. ya yeah. yeah, I mean, we also love going to the rugby watching rugby games we we were sure that the Tonga high school team was always we would always come on top but going to the athletic games Uh, the Tongans up to now, when I, whenever I watch, I, I watch the recent uh, games in Lehona, I think, or in Teofaiva, it was online, and I think most of the Tongan athletes came last. One, uh, a few would come in first, but yeah, Tonga High was wasn't so good in athletics. In rugby, yes, they would always come out the champions. I don't know, uh, in athletics, uh, I don't know. In a few would come first, but most uh, last or something. Uh, I have few, uh, a lot of friends, Tongan friends, Anolo. I had a video chat with Anolo a couple of months ago. Uh, he's, in, he's in Babao now. And I think... Uh, Our neighbor, who was uh, Patrick James, who had a son, William and George. William uh, is a pilot of Emirates. He came down one time to the Philippines and got in touch with us and we met for lunch. Yeah, it was great, you know, reminiscing about Tonga, Tonga days. Uh, we, this, we, we, we plan to, to visit Tonga this year but uh, what happened with the pandemic it was cancelled we were all planning and excited that we, you know we'd visit Tonga in time for the reunion but then this pandemic came along so it was put on hold maybe later on in the future we might we're still excited to you know to go back and even Charles Charles Subash when they learned that we be visiting they they also wanted to you know to time their their visit so we we see each other and yeah thank you uh, tonga for the people place we grew up there healthy strong i think i can safely say that uh, my health today was because we we had a good and very healthy childhood in, in Tonga. So that's one thing I, I, I will uh, always, you know, remember and teach to my kids how to grow up healthy. Thank you. Thanks, Norman. And it's uh, uh, heartening to hear all these uh, fond memories of, uh, of growing up in Tonga. I think that's something that will never go away that um, many of you grew up in Tonga and it's just uh, nice to hear that. Manjula, can I come over to you, please? Yes. Thank I have you. not prepared so much, but I could just think of a few things. Like sure. Which is my favorite friends and, and, and uh, things that I had done. And um, well, when we started, when I started Tonga High School, that was, I. Uh, in 1974 and uh, the classes I remember when those who entered from the primary school there was a lower form one and upper form one so so somehow they moved me and my sister to the low, the upper form one that's a 73 class so therefore I'm um, either 74 or 73 and um And during that time, I had a few friends. Um, I had Anasaini Tufua and Fanai Fuo Akawola, um, Langi Langi, Saini Vimadhao, and many more. And even boys too. And, um, and uh, I, I was in Terea house and I was not so good in sports because I was so tiny. And, And to compete with all these, you know, like like Roger said, those giants, you know, I couldn't compete with them. So and I 
I sh shied away doing sports and uh, and mainly concentrated in in um, studying, which didn't succeed so much, but yeah. And uh, the thing I didn't really like was the Tongan class. I even, I didn't speak Tongan that well at that time. And, um, and we, I just sat there, I didn't do anything. And now I regret, I wish I just did the Tongan class. It didn't matter whether that class or not. And, uh, oh, my phone is shutting down there. Yeah. We can still hear you, Manjula. Um, perhaps uh, you can try and, uh, and charge or fix your phone and we'll continue and we'll come back to you. Um, or are you coming back on on Lenny's uh, phone? Yes. Um, yes, we can see you. You can continue. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me, Amelia? Yes. Yeah, my phone just died down. I forgot to charge it. Anyway, uh, that's good. And then um, let me see what else. Oh, my favorite teachers. Um, I had some science teachers, but some, um, what's his name? Mr. Mao Mao and Mr. Mai Langi. And I like my math teachers, uh, Mrs. Taulahi and, and, um, and Mrs. Fonua, Annette Fonua. And who else did I remember? But some teachers, which um, I didn't really like, so <laughs> I wouldn't even say names of words. Yeah. And um, I love math. Math was my favorite subject. And yeah, um, what else? Like doing? I love going to the movies with my, my friend Ansaini. I spend a lot of time with my Ansaini. And and I remember one time she 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 loved Greece, so we went twice to watch Greece at at the Tali Eva Theater. And on the way, we'd eat one ice cream or two ice cream, and then into the cinema. And that was a, a, just a great memory I had with Anasaini. And uh, with I was friend also with Ate Moala. Dr. Atemola, we used to cycle a lot and, um, and mainly go swimming. Swimming was one of the things we did a lot. It was the only pastime, cycling and swimming. <laughs> that was good. And uh, what else do I remember? Um, yes, I remember Mr. French, Itani. Um, who else was my teacher? Yeah, and um, Ruth, I think I came, I left Tonga High School before you had come, so uh, that's why I don't know, really know you. So it's nice to meet you, Ruth, and your parents. And Julie, um, I don't know if I remember you, but, but you, you said you had friends, but I do remember your friends. And... Um, that's all. I hope I, I will say more next time and be more prepared. Thank you. No worries, uh, Jula, and thank you. Thank you for reflecting. Um, I'm mindful that uh, Norman uh, has got some time constrained. So uh, rather than giving the opportunity to the Zuzas, I will give you the opportunity, Norman, since you might be uh, leaving us earlier than the others. Um, hey. So just... Uh, just moving on, uh, thank you for those memories and the early days and your friends and all of that. I think you did mention, Norman, your house. Uh, let's talk about the houses and whether you, did you, you, know, you ran for your house, the house competition, any other activities that you'd like to mention quickly. And then because you're leaving, you might as well uh, tell us a little bit more about where you are today uh, in, in Manila and your family and what you're doing uh, before uh, we move on to the others. Thank you, Norman. Okay, um, the house, Kava house. My memory is quite vague. 
at this time. I'm not sure if, if during the year or after some time I had to go to another house. It was sort of something like that. I'm not so sure. I think uh, I went to a yellow house. Yellow, I think is uh, Telea or something. Telea. And Nua. Yeah, they were. Uh, yellow is Nua. Yeah, but I, I think I, I, I didn't you stay in one green, house. to Telea? <laughs> but I was first in red and then different uh, house. Anyways, uh, we'd always have this singing competition, bit inter-house competition, and then I think dancing too. Uh, you know, you have to practice, you have to sing. And the only thing I remember is joining being in that 400 meter race it was uh, unforgettable in a, in a not so good way. And right now I'm, uh, I'm in the Philippines. I used to work uh, in a hotel 80 kilometers away from Manila. And then the pandemic struck. I moved to Manila and stayed away for what two years now. Stayed away from work. Uh, eventually, I, I resigned. So right now, um, staying home, taking care of kids. I have an um, eight-year-old and a fourteen-year-old kid. At my age, too late in the day, but yeah, just keep going. You know, give them the chance to grow. Provide them with what I remember from Tonga, good times, you know, let them be kids without too much of this uh, electronic stuff, you know, we didn't have that before. So, you know, how it was like then it would have been different if we had electronic gadgets way back. I think I wouldn't enjoy that that much my stay in Tonga wouldn't be that uh, memorable if we had that then. Because there, back then, we'd just go biking, go fishing, go swimming, go jogging, um, go to Matakiewa, where the water reservoir is of the water board. And we'd pick uh, guavas, mangoes, uto, you know the uto, the coconut thing? Yeah. that. And yeah, I, I'd always remind my kids that that kind of life is, you know, healthier and it could help you later on. Like right now, my health, I would attribute, I would attribute it to, to my growing up in Tonga. Clean, environment clean is, you know, and not, not much stress. And the food, yeah, just keep away from pork and the yams. Too much of the root crops is also not good. So right now, yeah, I'm taking uh, you know taking care of kids. I'm kind of retired already, so that's about it. But uh, any the news of Tonga, we'd always check uh, on the internet. Uh, the, the recent earthquake, tsunami, and of course the rugby games. We will we'd still be following rugby games. Our roots of that would be back in Tonga, way back when there was no TV in Tonga. We'd be we'd follow the Springboks All Blacks games on a ra on a radio transistor with the antenna wire going all the way to the roof, and we'd listen to the rugby game. There was no TV. And up to now, we're still following games. Noel is for the All Blacks and for the Springboks. We even went to Japan for the last Rugby World Cup. We saw the first game, the Springboks and the All Blacks. So that was really something for me and Noel because we, we still follow the games. And uh, yeah, so right now I'm just taking, uh, just chilling. And to provide still for my kids who are still very young. And I don't know how long I will last, but still we'll keep going. So that's the spirit. 
Yep. It was uh, I I got the wrong. So thank you again. Thank you. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you, man, everyone. Norman. Good to Lovely. see everyone here. Yeah. I yep, wish there were same. more. I wish there were more. But yeah, uh, yeah, maybe next time there'll be more. With with your uh, encouragement, and I'm sure more will join. Yes. Definitely, we'll aim to have many more. And we will keep you informed. And uh, just for your information, the 75th celebrations that the main uh, alumni is uh, holding in Tonga has been deferred to next June. So I'm sure you uh, stay excited with your plans to be in Tonga. And hopefully, Lord willing, we'll all meet up in uh, Nukualofa and walk the Halafatafehi again, see your corner and uh, <laughs> see old friends and Anolo must be keeping you informed, of course. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. just checking on Beverly. Um, Beverly, if you can just uh, give us a sound check, you have to unmute yourself, um, Bev. I can't do it from my end. Uh, so uh, keep trying. We'd love to have you. Um, otherwise, uh, you're definitely on the list for the next uh, Talanoa uh, in English. Let's just continue uh, with this round of, uh, of uh, conversation uh, as we swing back. You know, I think some of you mentioned and some didn't mention your house uh, of Kava is the red, uh, Telea is the green and Nua is yellow and Sangone is blue. Uh, if you have some uh, memories that uh, has uh, stuck with you all this uh, time uh, with your house, uh, feel free to to go back to those. Otherwise, um, I'll touch slightly on something on the school motto. The school motto in Tongan was Kihelele Taha. Uh, and some people have translated that to be the best. Some have uh, translated that to excel. So I'll ask one of you to just reflect on any of those, your house or the school motto and uh, where you are today. And then we will bring in uh, Beverly to introduce herself after. Does it look like Roger, you want to come in? Oh. Okay, the, um, hi, Beb. Yeah, so uh, the school motto is Kihelele Taha, or to the best to excel. So um, I, I was aware of the motto, it is fitting for the school as I believe that uh, Tonga High School is academically the best in the whole country. Uh, I, I don't want to boast, but that's just the fact. Uh, Tonga High School is really good um, academically. Uh, the, the school has managed to lead in the academic field since it was founded in 1947 and uh, continue to do so this very day. The results of the New Zealand examinations at the end of the year in Form 5 and Form 6, although now they have Form 7, but when I was in Tong High School, it was uh, Form 5 and Form 6 when we set the New Zealand examinations. And uh, uh, Tonga High School was always ahead of the pack when the uh, results came out. Uh, many students end up going to university to further their education. And the, the motto applies to each and every one of us, way, even way after we leave high school, uh, to always do one's best in whatever we do. We can also realize our potential if we do our best. And even if we fail, if we do our best and make an effort, uh, that's what matters. So that's my take of the um, Tong High School motto. Thanks. Thanks, Roger. Um, we will continue, but I'm hoping that Bev could uh, come on. Uh, Bev will give you a few minutes to introduce yourself. And also, uh, if you could please share some of your memories uh, when you were in Tonga High. So over to you, Bev. Can you just uh, unmute uh, the sound and then uh, go ahead? Thank you. You have to unmute. There, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Can you see me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Finally. 
I've had nothing but trouble getting on here. <laughs> and that's part of the perks of growing up in Tonga. We just read books. We didn't have computers. <laughs> How is everyone? We're doing fine, Bev. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, started we... like one hour can... ago, and you can just this is your moment, uh, Bev. Oh, uh, uh, well, show everyone yes. on the screen. Yes, we can see you. Oh, can... I can't see everyone. I only see you, Malia. I'm so um, sorry. Bev, just put it on gallery view yeah. under view. You can have speaker well, view or gallery phone. view. I'm on oh. my phone because I had so much trouble. Um, okay. But before I could see everyone, but loving the hair, Ruth. Always changing it up, aren't you, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Julie. Hi, Bev been a long time it's been a really long time yeah how have you been i've been good 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 really i'm good. glad to hear it i'm a grandma now i know i saw and i can't wait till i get to be one so i just got my my daughter just got married last may so you gotta give them time <laughs> So who else is on here? Because I can't see everyone on the panel. Yes, let me just tell you, there's Roger Bannaby. Uh, there's uh, the parents of Ruth. There was oh, Norman, yeah. Norman Ramos and uh, <sighs> Manjula Prema Nitt and Julie. So, oh, yes. lovely. So we've all done our introduction, uh, talking about ourselves, our class, our friends, our house, uh, our impressions of uh, first impressions of Tonga High School. So now for the next five minutes, it's all yours. Oh, Over gee. to you. <laughs> oh, the pressure, the pressure. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I don't remember my house. Um, and I went in in 77. Julie was the first person to come up to me and introduce herself. And I was quite culture shocked, you know, to say the least, moving to Tonga. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was strange for me because um, so different from California to move there. Um, we started out at Olatani and then we moved to Sopu. And uh, that was nice because we were by the water. We lived across the street from, oh, what was her, Alexis? Um, McGrawson, wasn't it, Julie? Yes, McGrawson. Yeah, and her father was the director of the Peace Corps. So, um, yeah, so that that was nice. At least I had someone. But then um, I went to Tonga High and I was quite quiet, quite, you know. Uh, my brother was my protector and, you know. Um, memories, God, memories. I go home to Tonga every three years. Um, obviously, a lot of you probably know I have a son who's half Tongan. Um, and what else? What else was the other question, Amalia? Yes, um, just if you can just uh, mention some of your teachers, your classmates any oh. anything yes please well classmates were mostly you know i was picked on a lot i was the blonde girl you know and um classmates it was mostly julie that i hung out with um you know it was her and i we did pretty much everything together 
So, um, gosh. And hung out with my brother, hung out with all his friends because his friends used to play Mahjong every day. And so I would tag along and go watch them play Mahjong. You would think that I would learn how to play Mahjong, but nope, never did. So <laughs> that being said, <laughs> don't challenge me because I'll lose. <laughs> but yeah, I know Bill, um, Bill loved Tonga. And um, okay, I'm not gonna get emotional. <laughs> I miss him. Um, God, sailing. Bev, Bev, while you're composing yourself, I, I showed a photo of uh, Ian Most, Subash, Bill, myself, and you um, <laughs> at Far Far, I think. Yeah, um, I showed a photo, which I think I've seen you. I think it was Pangai Motu. Yeah. Mosu, sorry. Yes. yes. It was the same um, time that Bill and I had hijacked the sailboat without my father knowing and uh, crashed into the reef because there was low tide. <laughs> Coming back, we were trying to hurry back for dinner on time and uh, crashed into the reef. Um, and <laughs> yeah, that didn't end very well. <laughs> okay, it was, hey. <laughs> what was it? so you forgot your house, but then um, do you remember some of the um, any of the activities? Uh, you know, sports or singing or you know, a lot marching. Of it, I did a lot of the tongue and dancing, that there kind of go. Um, you know, and I did, I remember Hash Harriers. I don't know if anyone on the panel can back me up on that, but Bill yes. got carving. And, you know, we used to run for the Hash Harriers. Of course, I was never as good as my brother. He was very fast. Mm. Um, you know, swimming. I mean, I would swim from the wharf to Whangaimotu without even thinking about it. And now it's like I went back uh, in 2019 and... Um, someone saw me walking to the front of the boat and they go, uh oh, she's going, she's going. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go. You know, they thought I was going to dive off and just swim. And <laughs> it's like, no, at my age, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but back in the day, that's all we did. We yeah. swam. Yeah. We, um, sailed we surfed when we could but there wasn't a whole lot of surfing um i remember just kind of the beautiful thing about tonga was there was no internet there was no computers and people read books and we would swap books because we were so we you know we just had to read something and so we would switch books constantly you know and you always gave them back you always did and it kind of builds who you are as a person now probably why I couldn't get online so soon because <laughs> but um yeah there are fond memories I remember you know I used to babysit for the British High Commissioner and you know my parents 
and my brother and I going to the palace and things like that. But then the fun things were riding bikes with Julie. She always beat me. I don't know how, but she did. She always beat me. And we would just go along the waterfront. And, and she had brought up earlier cooking, her mom's cooking. Let me tell you, I spent so much time in that house. We're like part of our family does. <laughs> I spent a lot of hours in that house. <laughs> and I tried to learn how to sew with Julie and her mom. That was a train wreck, but uh, I tried. We had the patterns that you had to cut out, you know, and because you couldn't really buy a lot of clothes in Tonga. Julie and I had matching dresses. Um, I think you had, did you have the burgundy or the blue? I think I had the blue. And I had the burgundy. Yeah, yes. they were matching though. And oh. every point we were together. So, but yeah, they were good memories. I, I do have bad memories, but um, for the most part, I'm glad that I was brought up there and uh, I enjoy every single time I go home. Um, to visit and see, you know, friends and family. And I call them family. They're not blood family, but they're family. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, Bev. Um, I'll come back to you and uh, just being mindful of, uh, of the time. And uh, I will throw one, uh, not a question, but really uh, seeking uh, their opinion, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Edwin and Ivy Tezuza, uh, and this will take us to the last round. Um, since you left Tonga, things have changed a lot, uh, I must say. And I'd like to uh, ask you uh, and the others as well, but I'll start with uh, the two former teachers of Tonga High School. Your thoughts of education in Tonga uh, and uh, what would be any message or any advice that you would like to give at this point as you reflect uh, on education uh, in Tonga and also in Tonga High School, something that we can uh, take back from this program. Thank you, Edwini and Ivy, and we'll start with you, and then we will move on to the rest of the panel uh, on their thoughts of education in Tonga and in Tonga High School, or anything else that you want to mention uh, that you'd like to use this opportunity for that. Malo Aupito Edwini Mo Aivi. I'm asking. And you might you just want to unmute, unmute mum and dad. Yes, please. Well, I enjoyed my stay in Tonga. I thought the students were absolutely wonderful. They had a tremendous sense of humor. And I was a stickler for they being in class on time because I would shut the door and they soon learned that they had to come running to be in my class in time. So that, that was good. But overall, I enjoyed teaching in Tonga because I thought the students were wonderful. There was never a grumble about the amount of work I gave them to do or whatever. And they were keen, very keen, and they did very, very well. Uh, entirely through their own efforts, mainly, I would think. So I enjoyed my stay in Tonga tremendously from the teaching point of view, apart from other things. And you, Mother? Yes, I enjoyed. I couldn't believe how my face I was smiling so much because everybody was wishing us and wishing us <laughs> where we first came. And of course, 
uh, Simi had introduced us as IEV and Etwini, and everybody was shouting out on the roads, IEV, and waving out. I couldn't believe it. The people were so friendly. My jaws were aching most of the time. When we went for drives, I couldn't believe the number of pigs and piglings. And I said, look, 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 the pigs, the pigs. <laughs> and because the pig, the puaka, and the mo that was simply fabulous. But all in all, <laughs> teaching. <laughs> I couldn't get over the pigs, you know, <laughs> and, and the piglings. <laughs> but um, I enjoyed teaching the girls because it was like a challenge. And was they were, no, no, it was a typing class. So, oh. the, you know, so the, the girls were slouching in there. So sit up, sit up. You're not on the beach. Come on now. You've got to, you know, and uh, managed to get them going and introduce the Pittman's exams, which they excelled in and were very, very pleased with you know, the results. Then of course, I wore the Tongan dress at church, asking Kiristina Pumau if it was all right. And she got me the, the dress and things, you know, so that I could look nice and regal. But when in school, the girls asked me, Miss, why don't you wear the Tavala? And I said, no, no, I, I, can you see me walking like this? You know, because I was always marching to class. I don't walk slowly. To me, time is important. But uh, getting back to Bev's talk of hash house harriers, I, I still wear this. For those who remember, can you see it at all? Yes. Uh, the back is a bit rude. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is still going strong and we have wonderful memories of Tonga. And I'm still in touch with quite a few of the girls. And of course, some of uh, Ikani and uh, I write a lot of emails, but it's been a wonderful experience. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us on here today. Thank you so it's been much. It's lovely to meet everybody. <laughs> exactly. Same here. Yes. And the pleasure is ours. Um, con I'll continue to, uh, to everyone. Uh, you know, uh, we are in that last round. Uh, whether you've been to Tonga in the last five to 10 years, I'm not sure. But uh, what are your, have... your, your take? Uh, in terms of uh, being back in Tonga, uh, also uh, what you hear about education in Tonga, and any any last few words for your schoolmates or for your friends, um, please uh, do go on and share. Um, do you want to come on, Manjula? Jula, uh, we, yeah, can you, um, yeah. All right, um, I, have, uh, I haven't been back to Tonga. I've been away from Tonga for, for almost four years. I left Tonga in, in 2018. That was after the Gita cyclone year. And, um, Tonga has been a lot of um, um, cyclones and there's a lot of damages and, and it's sad to see the damages there. Otherwise, it's really, I mean, just, just being there and with all the people and the smiling faces, it's just beautiful and living by the coast, of course, and swimming, yeah. That's about it. Malo, Pito, Jula. Um, anyone uh, from uh, Ruth, uh, Roger, Julie, and then we'll uh, end up with uh, with Bev. If Norman is still available, he can also come on. Thank you. I've done a lot of talking, so I might pass the baton on <laughs> to Roger. Okay. Yes, so I, I haven't been back to Tonga since I left permanently in 1987. Uh, I'm sure the country has changed a lot since then. 
Uh, I've seen some recent uh, aerial pictures of Nukolofa and it looks so different. <laughs> you know, you, you, you recognize the roads and things like that, but the buildings there, you know, there's a lot of new buildings in Tama. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of progress uh, in Tama. Uh, my thoughts on education, whether it be uh, in Tonga or uh, Australia, uh, is that uh, it's an important part of uh, nation building. Uh, people need to be educated to build a knowledgeable workforce and to keep up with the times, especially in the digital age. So education is very important. And also uh, it should be free. You know, it, everyone in this, that's uh, of school age should be able to access education wherever they are. And uh, so my message to uh, mates in my class, uh, I'm sure a lot of them are either retired or retiring. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm retired, uh, is that um, life is a journey. Have fun, be, be grateful for whatever you have. It's time to relax and enjoy time with family, friends, and the community. Live in the present and don't forget to look out after Mother Earth. And the question about uh, what do I do now and where do I live? Uh, after working nearly 30 years in the Commonwealth Government of Australia, I retired in 2017. My working years were spent mainly in the Department of uh, Immigration. Uh, dealing with asylum seekers, uh, those who uh, apply for refugee status in, in Australia. Um, happily living in Canberra, it's not a big city and there's no traffic, so getting around, um, you know, is quite easy. Uh, basically, you can move from one place to another in Canberra in, say, 30 or 40 minutes. And uh, so there, there are four seasons in Canberra. We have winter, summer, uh, spring, and autumn. So, you know, the, the, the scenery changes uh, throughout the year. And Canberra is a planned city. So, uh, you know, they, they, they uh, found a place between Sydney and Melbourne and they develop it. So everything is planned, which makes it, you know, really nice uh, because, uh, you know, whatever buildings that, you know, that are built and all that, they, they're all uh, planned. And, and so the, you know, the, the environment is, is such that it's always, an, you know, good, good to be in, to work in and to play in, all that kind of thing. And, Roger, you uh, miss me yawning. Roger, you miss me yawning because oh, I, those of us I in know. Melbourne are like, boring. Yeah, I I, actually, I, <laughs> I was just in Melbourne uh, um, a few weeks ago. And yeah, I, I do notice there's always a big difference. Sydney and Melbourne have all the big, you know, the big cities and big everything. But Canberra, I, I know it's it's uh, a lot of people uh, see Canberra as a boring place. But I, I, I've i spent like 30, 34, 35 years in Canberra. So uh, to me, this is home. And so I, I enjoy uh, attending to the garden as a retiree. There's always lots to do around the place. And I've been looking at uh, uh, Ruth's uh, uh, garden in progress. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, no, gardening is a good thing. You know, it's, uh, less in stress. Uh, there's always things uh, different to see each time. And uh, so, so when COVID struck, no, no problem for me. You know, I can just uh, be in the garden all day. Wouldn't even know if there was COVID. And um, yeah, I also enjoy watching rugby. And uh, as Norman said, you know, uh, my love for rugby came from growing up in Tonga. So uh, I'm a member of the, um, the uh, Canberra Rugby League uh, Club, as well as the Rugby Union Club. So I, I watch a lot of rugby. In fact, yesterday I was watching the Brumbies play uh, the Canberra Crusaders, you know, live. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we lost, but uh, it was a it was a close it's match. That's the, the course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, someday I would like to visit Tonga again, having spent a long time there, especially in my formative years. It has a special place in my heart. Yeah. Thank you, Malo yeah, yeah. Pito. Sure. Okay. 
Thanks, Roger. And I'm sure you will find that opportunity to return mm -hmm. home to Tonga. Um, fascinated yeah. by um, all what you've done and what you're doing, especially the garden. Um, what, what are the gardens in Melbourne looking like? Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'll let Ruth uh, uh, tell us and then to Julie and then and then Bev. Ruth, you still have a oh. chance. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I was sort of worried I would take up too much space because I'm so keen to hear from everybody um, and we have such a short time. But um, um, what I'm doing now is... Um, when I finished at Tong High School, which was a really great environment for me, coming from quite a hippie school, and I think, I think I appreciated the the contrast. You know, Roger, you talked about you know all the rules and the brown sandals, or was it Norman? And like for me, I kind of really just enjoyed um, the contrast with my school in New Zealand, and I think I really thrived academically at Tonga High and. Um, when I finished, I went back to New Zealand and did seventh form, and then I went into nursing. And I'll cut a long story short, but um, worked in England, uh, New Zealand, and Australia, and um, started studying. So I did a graduate diploma in counselling, then I did my master's, then my PhD. And at the moment, I work at a university in Melbourne, uh, which is kind of known for design and, and art, and uh, even though I'm a health professional, I'm working in a school of art, which is really exciting. So I'm getting to do a lot of playing. I've been doing a lot of research about COVID, um, how COVID has affected um, people who've been pregnant during the pandemic, older people, uh, young students, international students. Um, and I'm also interested in how to make research something that's not far away in a tower but can make sense to the public because the public pay for research so um, I've also been thinking about how we can translate you know our language so it's much more accessible to people so for example I did some research about emergency departments and we made some animations uh, I worked with a comic artist to translate research about COVID and older people um, which was published in The Guardian, which was wonderful. And I've just started a podcast on birth and justice. So I think, um, you know, Tonga was really great from that point of view. And I know I've got a lot of friends who are listening um, that were at school and um, just, you know, very, very grateful for, um, you know, all the, the love and the affi and the support of people, you know, and, and like Roger you know, Julie, Bev, um, you know, and Manjula have said, you know, these, these and Norman, um, you know, living in Tonga really did shape us in a very powerful way. And I feel for me, um, I don't know about you, Bev, um, because I arrived at the age of 16, you know, rather than being a, uh, and, and for me, you know, I was a big novelty, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of like, um, you know, I was the new shiny thing in town. And so I got a lot of um, affirmation, had a lot of fun, got a lot of support and probably had very different experiences to you, Bev, Julie and um, Manjula, you know, because it was a very short, but very sweet and intense time. And I'm grateful for it. But, but, but also, Bev, I don't want to shy away from parts that were difficult, you know, and I think, there were some challenging things, but that can be Talanoa number two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. And uh, I think you you have the, now that you know about this uh, face, Facebook group, you could put some of your work there. Please share some of uh, the um, fantastic research and work that you're doing. And anyone else for that matter. And even just to drop in and and uh, say hello, uh, we'll really welcome that. Um, Julie, uh, any last few words and then uh, Beverly? And at the same time, I'd like to recognize that we have one of the uh, former students, Salote Latu. Uh, I think she's tuning in to Zoom from uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, we will give her an opportunity to say hello uh, after uh, Julie and, and Bev. Thanks, Julie. 
Yes, um, it's been a long time since I've been to Tonga. I left in 1981 and I have not been back, but I um, still keep in touch with some of my friends that I had there. And I hope someday to come to go back to Tonga. I have very many fond memories of my life there. It seemed like a paradise for when I got there at 14. And, um, and I have a lot of fond memories. I, I don't know if um, very many people knew this, but I had learning disabilities. So schooling was always a little bit difficult for me. But um, now I work actually in a school with kids with learning disabilities. And so um, that has shaped my life. And, but the teachers were always, they, they were accommodating. They, they gave me, you know, extra time to do assignments, things that I needed. And so I think that that was, you know, pretty helpful. And that's- Fantastic, <laughs> thanks, Julie. Um, Bev, uh, please unmute and then join us. Yes. There I am. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, you know, I went to Tonga when I was, I think I was 10 and, um, I think now I'm obviously back in the United States. I'm married to an orthodontist. Uh, we've been married for 37 years, well, together 37 years, married for 31, um, two daughters, one just got married. You saw the photo of Zamalia. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And my other one is at NEU getting her doctorate in veterinary school. So um, I can't complain, you know, I go home as much as I can if if they unlock the borders, I'd be home right now because I usually go during the summer months to Tonga. So unfortunately, that's not happening. Um, you know, I pray every day for Tonga, for the recovery, for the repairs, for everything. I, I haven't changed a bit. I'm the same person, you know, and a shout out to Ruth. Uh, I'm just going to say this and I'm going to say it nicely. Stop posting photos of your food. <laughs> <That's> Sorry. <laughs> no, I've already said it enough times, Ruth. You're killing me. She can be on a campsite. <laughs> And make the most amazing food. I'm like, okay. No. <laughs> so, yeah, I will be back to Tonga as soon as the borders are open and everything is safe. And, um, you know, this has been an experience. I'm sorry I was so late. Normally I'm punctual. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that we all got to talk and catch up and see all your faces was really nice. <laughs> so um, any other questions, Amalia? Thank you, Beverly. I saw a drink on your side, so um, I want to uh, ask you what drink are you oh, drinking uh, tonight? <laughs> I know it's very late for you. It's uh, very, but yeah. it's a trail. And you actually got started earlier than what was posted. Okay. So um, that's scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> Malo, Aupito, everyone. Uh, I must say, I think we've done a, a, a great job tonight. Uh, 
I see Norman, I think, has left for his, uh, uh, his errand or, or the kids. But I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for making well, time you. tonight and also your weekend in, uh, in Australia, New Zealand, uh, and uh, of course, an early start for Sweden and a very late night for Julie and uh, Bev. And uh, I won't say myself, I love doing this. I enjoy it. I think I gained so much. And I also want to, um, to wish uh, through you, Roger, uh, please uh, uh, share our congratulations and our love and Lotu for your father turning 90 uh, in a week's yeah. time and, and your family. Uh, yeah, I'll, is, I'll, I'll let him know. Yeah, Thank that's you. a milestone. And mm -hmm. uh, our extra, uh, extra uh, special gift tonight are our two teachers. Uh, former teachers, the uh, Evelini, Etuini, Moaivi, Malo Aupito, uh, for your time. And uh, I would also be asking here, uh, Dr. Roof, uh, can you please uh, make time to facilitate the next conversation, number two? Uh, thank you. Uh, and, <laughs> and Beverly, you'll be the first one on the list for the next one uh, so that you can come on. And this will be. Uh, in two weeks time in June, uh, in June, uh, sometimes to, to go inside with the celebrations of the 75th anniversary. For your information, the celebration is going to be in San Francisco, Sacramento, in the US, uh, also in Auckland, in New Zealand, as well as in Brisbane for the alumni in Australia. So. Wow. Uh, with those few words, again, I'd like to say malo al pito and uh, wishing everyone a, a very safe and a good weekend. And uh, Lord willing, we will see each other again pretty soon. Malo oh, can I just ask, yes. can I just ask one thing? Can, can we just get a photo of us all and we can put it on the website? Yes, please. Do you want to do a screenshot, Amelia, or okay. shall I do it? You can do one, uh, Ruth, please. I will do my best here. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to count to three. Get your good side ready. Taha ua tolu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are you everyone. happy for me to share it in our yes, group? Please. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Road cool. to Vai Mata 2022, come in and share what you want to share there. Malo ao pito and good night and have a good day. Thank you very much. Ofatu, Ofatu, Manjula. Ofatu. Thank you for being a great facilitator. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you. All. Happy Thank birthday you. to the parents. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Bye.